Yeah, it was funny. We just, someone just asked me actually, what were two two films that uh, two French films, and I, they could be cliches. So stop me over they are, but there was one in '96, Len, um, which was very influential on me and my friends actually at the time. It just felt like a a voice um, that was fresh and exciting. Um, and then the prophet. Is, uh, forget, is it, uh, am I leaning on cliches here? Jacques Audiard, it's uh, not a cliche, it's uh, a masterpiece. Oh, right, well, okay, good. So uh, I thought that was the best movie of the year, actually, that year. Um, it's good choices. So I lean on those two. I mean, I'm sure if we sat here for a while, we could come up with some more. I'm afraid, uh, yes, I'm mean, uh, from the beginning, so, you know, I'm one of the writers on this one. So, um, you know, from its very inception, you know, uh, the DNA is fundamentally there, right? And so, you want to respect the uh, nostalgia of the original fans, but from that, I'm there, you know, from from its, its very inception, uh, and trying to make it a contemporary film. I mean, there, I, I don't think there's any other version of, you know, if you mean it, you mean it. So that means that you start writing, and then you finish. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing that you aren't involved in. I, Directing and editing are one of the same anyway. So, yeah, you're there from the beginning to the end. The only place that you're not is in the, a room full of a thousand artists mm. that are pulling off some of the CG. Mm. So, but even that, every week, you sit in a little black room and for two hours, you go through all the visual effects of that, of that week. So there's nothing... There's nothing that you're not involved with. You yeah. know, from every musical note to every frame that is in the film, to the casting, to the writing. Well, this was the first full-blown musical. I have to tell you, I'm not sure if there's really much difference between if you're, if you're into music, whether it's a traditional musical or it's not a traditional musical. So I've used so much music in the past anyway that it was just making the leap from there to there, from uh, a non-traditional to a traditional, really wasn't, uh, it took all about 30 seconds to feel comfortable in that department. I feel quite comfortable going from one genre to another genre, you know, because the last few films I've done, I have tried to move genres. Uh, Man, was Man From Uncle my last? No, King Arthur was my last, mm. uh, Man, uh, Man From Uncle was before then, and then uh, Sherlock, well, I think it was before then. So, you know, I try and b bounce around a bit in order to keep myself stimulated and hopefully having a, a, a new perspective and a fresh perspective upon uh, creativity. I, I mean, I like the challenging aspect, right? And it, it, what sometimes happens is there's a sequence that as you start filming, you realise that it's been, they're trying to get two scenes into one. And then you realise that you're in a bit of trouble because that means you're going to need another day. Um, and you have to make, you find that day somewhere. You've got, you've got to separate scenes. So, but there's a moment of panic as, as, you're, as you're working out, you know, and by the way, it's as much my fault as, as anyone else's. You sort of, because only on the day do you actually have to analyse a scene. And it's only once you've got the actors in the room and you're in the room, and then the scenes be, be become manifest that you go, you're saying this, you're saying that, you're saying, oh my, and you, know, you shouldn't be saying that because now that's too much information and it's going to contaminate the first amount of information. And it, you know, it happened to us just once on this, but when it did, there's a nerve, there's a nerve wracking moment because you got one and a half scenes. Well, one and a half's the worst of everything because you do need the half. But that half has become a whole. So now where do you find the time to put that hole? So in those moments, because otherwise pretty much anything I don't feel too challenged by in terms of I can deal with that, I can deal with that. And I have to say, in the process of filmmaking, I'm good at being calm and I deal with each challenge as it comes to it. So I'm pretty confident that when you get there in the moment, all the other components there in the moment, and so you can address it. Mm. Unlike life, incidentally, um, although life is similar, but I'm not as cool in life as I am in filmmaking. Really? Yeah, yeah. I find it easier in filmmaking, and I find 
uh, I'm good under pressure and a, and a ticking clock. You know, as long as I have a team that's, you know, into it. But if I get a scene, a scene and a half, then I go, whoa, hold on. Now we're gonna have to, now we're gonna have to address this. And then, of course, what you try and do in, is try and take that half and stick it into this scene. And then after a couple of hours, you realize it's impossible. And then you have to subscribe to the fact that you're either gonna lose that half or you're gonna to have to put, turn it into a hole. Now, I've said this before, but it's an easy kind of one to go to, but I, I, I suspect that something, a film like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid sort of summarizes disparate genres. And, and particularly if you see it in the context of when it was made, it's kind of Western mm. with Burt Bacharach singing. It was kind of mad. Um, but I think as, a, as an all-around movie, it's kind of a perfect cast. Um, and it, it was funny enough, yet serious enough. Uh, and ultimately it was worth it as a sort of creative expression. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you now.